All right, so in this video we're checking out the BFPV Meteor 75 Express LRS Edition. So uh, yeah, BFPV is also now updating all of their products with Express LRS Editions. And um, you've seen the board in this one already and the custom build that I made. This is a Meteor 65 pusher that I built with that flight controller board and you can see that right there. It's an all-in-one, no video transmitter. Um, but it does have the Express LRS antenna. It is on the bottom here. So this is inverted, it's right there. So they've actually um, updated the Meteor 65, the 75, and the 85 with this new 1S all-in-one board. And uh, they're now using the new MO3 uh, video transmitter, which now goes up to 350 milliwatts. So for those of you that were complaining on the previous generation that it was limited to 25 milliwatts, you should uh, now have much more range now on 350 milliwatts, as well as much more control range, of course, with Express LRS. So, of course, they uh, went back to an older motor, I guess, and I guess a smaller motor, not necessarily an older, but it's a motor that's been around for a while. This is the uh, 0802 19,500 kV motor on a Gemfan bi-bladed prop. They previously used this um, larger 1102 motor and this one was uh, 18,000 kV with a three-bladed gem fan prop. So they're, this is kind of the trend on uh, these um, 75 millimeter whoops with the uh, 40 millimeter propellers is they're going with the smaller motors now to make things lighter, get a little bit more flight time. Of course, it gives you um, less overall power. So if you're looking for ultimate power, you want to go with the bigger motor. I think those are being discontinued in favor of this one. I don't know what is up with the standard FreeSky version of this. If there's still, if it still has the um, 1102 motor or the 0802 motor, I would contact their support to ask them. They didn't tell me um, if they're discontinuing or not. So if you're still interested in the FreeSky version, uh, I think it's just going to be the same old version that they were selling before. I don't think that they've actually made any updates to that version. Okay, so this is what the um, drone weighs now, and it's coming in at 24 grams. So yeah, pretty typical for the size. Uh, you know, nice, nice weight. Of course, uh, they're still using the BT 2.0 batteries and connector that hasn't changed. The 450, that's 12.4 uh, grams, and then the all-up flying weight's coming in at 36.68 grams. So one other thing I do want to show you, this is uh, something that's sent along with uh, the drone, but this is not included. They get this um, charger tester and it's uh, basically USB-C based now. This is an updated version. So it comes with the USB-C cable. And uh, the previous one was like brown. Um, you would plug it in, it will show you the battery voltage. I'll show you that. And it comes on a nice display here. And it shows you the current battery voltage of the battery you're plugging in. On the side here, it says test, and then you can, of course, um, plug this into uh, that USB-C cable into a 5-volt source. It's not uh, QC or uh, quick charge compliant, so if you're using a, one of those higher capacity uh, chargers, it only works on 5 volts, so keep that in mind. And you can plug in two batteries and charge them up with this charger. I'll link this down in the video description as well. Okay, so overall, not a whole lot of surprises with this. Um, now, this being lighter than the uh, older version with the 1102 motors, it's going to be fair amount more. That's a fair amount more agility, but it's got less weight, so it's going to get pushed around more in the wind, as you'll see here in a second, in the flight footage. Also, on this version here with the Express LRS, um, I am showing you the one of the flights that had some weird stuff going on, and so I just wanted to show you that. There's still some weird stuff going on in Express LRS, which is why, even though while I am confident in it and switching a lot of stuff over, you'll see some kind of quirky stuff happen once in a while. And of course, you know, the developers are still uh, putting a, a huge effort into fixing all of the bugs and, uh, you know, changes are still happening very quickly. But this is one of the weird things that I've seen before um, where the uh, RSSI and the RSSI DB is fine, but the... LQ just behaves weird. So most of the times that I flew this, LQ was totally fine, worked properly. But in this one, it was just blinking. It was at like 25 or something. And I have no idea why. 
it, I've seen qu weird quirks like this happen in other cases, but usually if you unplug and replug, things will reboot and everything will be back to normal. But I just do want to show you that, yeah, ExpressLRS is not perfect yet. I didn't have any issues with a failsafe or control loss or anything like that. It's just that the LQ on the OSD was just behaving kind of funny. Anyway, um, I will make a video at some point later about how these SPI ExpressLRS receivers work because they are not, well, the, the firmware updates are not normal compared to other ExpressLRS receivers. They're built into the Betaflight firmware. So the whole process of configuring it and, up, and updating the firmware is not the same. Uh, there is documentation on the expresslrs.org website about that, uh, but I don't think um, it's quite ready for a video yet. I do know that some of you have asked me about that, but you know, I, I would go there or go to the Discord server if you have some issues. Um, generally out of the box, the firmware is on there already. It's like version 4.3. Uh, as long as you follow the steps on the uh, expresslrs.org website in terms of binding and using the CLI to set your parameters. This is how you control the receiver is via the CLI commands, not via the radio. So that's the main difference. But yeah, I will make a video at some point in the future. So let me know if you have any questions about that and I'll try and address that in that video. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Here's the flight footage and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. I'm not sure what's up with the RSSI and the uh, LQ. It's a, uh, yeah, it's like not working, it seems like. Not really sure what's up with that. It's uh, a bit windy right now. So I'm head this is heading into the wind here. Yeah, I would just ignore the LQ. It doesn't seem like uh, it's set up right. Either that or I am on the wrong update rate on my radio. I've, it's kind of weird. It's, I've never seen that before. And I'm pretty sure this is the right update rate. Anyway, so this is flying all right for how windy it is. It's probably a pretty solid 10 miles per hour uh, coming from this direction here. You can see it's shaking. Uh, it's gonna be fine for smaller gaps and spaces. You can do a few uh, rolls and flips and stuff. But you can see it kind of bobbling around. Uh, and that's due to the wind. Yeah, it's uh, these aren't these are not good conditions for flying something like this light. And yeah, I'm at low battery already. At about two minutes. We'll run it down a little bit more. I think they have the. Uh, default low battery warning set too high because these one of batteries you can take them down close to the three volts and they'll recover back up to like 3.5 volts yeah the, actually the wind's getting worse now it's probably like 20 miles an hour 15 to 20 now it's getting a little more shaky Yeah, I've got a little yaw wash out there because I'm at the end of the battery and the wind's not helping. Let's just, uh, yeah, you can see here, sticks. 
basically hands off here and then that's all shaking from the wind and then downwind we're gonna fly like a rocket ship this camera is, looks like it's a 16 by 9 camera the aspect ratio is all kind of squished yeah we're at 3.2 volts land now yeah, so they got. I think I'll adjust the. Um, I would adjust the uh, low voltage settings because the, the batteries can take a little bit more abuse than. I think they're being a little bit too conservative on their warning, and yeah, I'm out of four minutes of flight time now. Looks like the OSD elements need to be moved around as well. All right. I'll talk to you guys later.